uh, their use. And the scientific evidence shows the fact that um, cannabinoids have pain relieving properties, they can work synergistically with narcotics, and that they can help get rid of the narcotic addiction by transferring more and more to cannabis if that suits you. And from what we're seeing, most people are very happy to be sued. So, uh, next one, please. Body temperature is just another example. You know, you take a warm bath, what happens? You get relaxed and you get a little less pain frequently, you know, you have that hemorrhoid surgery and you keep taking baths all the time. Well, there's a reason for that. Your body has to maintain a balance of temperature, right? Just like the thermostat on your wall. Well, when you get too hot, your body makes endocannabinoids to change the biochemistry within you a little bit. So when you take that hot bath and your body has to compensate by making these endocannabinoids that have all these benefits, like relaxing and relieving yourself of pain. Uh, so these plant extracts, and this is critical to, you know, it will become more apparent as we go further when you understand what I mean by holistic and, and how something that impacts on our body in a multi-dimensional fashion has a different capacity to actually help us move towards health as opposed to plucking one thread in this multi-dimensional fabric that includes time as part of that fabric. Uh, the, the nature of how we are, the nature of how energy and chemistry flows through us is such that we will try to always rebalance ourselves. So if you're out of balance, that's your norm. And when you try to change that by plucking one thread, then what happens is the system, the rest of you, compensates and tries to create where you started, which if it's a state of disease, lack of health, then that's what it's going to be recreating. So you, need, you basically need to shift your biochemical balance in a multi-dimensional fashion. And because the cannabinoids regulate everything, you're just changing the whole entire picture. And that's what allows for some of these incredible, amazing results that you'll see. Next one, please. Uh, so we basically have discussed that already. Again, how it's so magical because of its broad impact on us. Um, so yeah, what I want to go into now is a little bit about what life really is. And, and this is a question that, of course, plagues everybody from the time we first had anybody. Uh, flip it again, please. So the underlying physics that, that I talk about was pioneered by Ilya Prigogine, who was a Nobel laureate for creating an entire new field far from equilibrium thermodynamics. Thermo is heat, dynamics is flow. What he's really talking about is energy flow, and as opposed to the conventional way of looking at energy and its relationship to things, uh, with, with his vision, it's when energy flows, there's a natural tendency for matter through which the energy is flowing to actually organize itself. This is totally against conventional thinking, but it's something that's absolutely real. He got his Nobel Prize, he started that field the year I was born, 1947. Um, and one of his quotes is, we are actually the children of the arrow of time, of evolution, not as progenitors. There's a, a conventional way of thinking about quantum theory, for example, is that things become real when you measure them, which implies that reality is created by us. And in contrast, what he's talking about is how when energy has flowed, flowed, flown, flowed for a couple of billion years, that we're able to sit here and talk about it because we've been building up complexity. And that's the, the special nature of, of his discoveries, really, which ultimately say that life must exist, not that it's an improbable miracle. It must exist as long as we have the flow of energy, which is what's going on because we have sunlight hitting the planet, and we have warmth within the planet, volcanoes, etc. Next slide. So this is just an example to show you something that you've not seen, and that's totally counterintuitive, but is at the heart of the kind of thing I'm talking about, when energy flows and organizes matter. What you're looking at here are four different Petri dishes, taken, pictures taken at different times. It's actually the same Petri dish, taken at four different times. And what's occurring is there's a chemical reaction, where basically electrons are flowing from something that has them and wants to get rid of them, going to something that doesn't have them and wants them. It's kind of like a chemical battery, essentially. And what's happening, let's go back there, please. Arrow, back arrow. One more, there we go. So what you're seeing here are patterns in a liquid. You know, we normally think of a liquid, everything's just sloshing around, the molecules 
themselves don't know where to go or what to do. They don't form patterns. It's random. And yet when these chemical reactions are occurring and the energy is flowing, there's an indicator in here that tells us whether the chemicals have more electrons or less. And it gives us a color reaction. And that's what you're looking at, which is showing you that in that liquid, there's molecular organization that is forming these patterns, these circles, where you have different, what's known as redox states. And the thing that's so incredible about this is that this is totally against the way you know, most of us are ever educated. So what, by not teaching us about this, it removes us from understanding life rather than it being a black box as a conceptual underlying foundation to it. And it's when electrons flow, very similar to what's happening here, that our biochemistry makes free radicals. And free radicals are the basis of inflammation and all age-related illnesses. So that, that's just to show you that in a non-living system, we can create what would be termed miraculous, the probability of you know, 10 to the 20 molecules organizing themselves into a pattern like that, essentially zero. But it's happening, and you can do the experiment over and over. So you have to adjust your brain to the reality that when energy flows, mass can be organized. Next one, please. Because it's that same process that's happening in us. We eat our food, and what are we doing? We're taking reduced hydrocarbons. We're taking carbon molecules that have hydrogens attached to them, and those hydrogens were forced on there by the sunlight. Or in the case of oil and gas, you know, uh, by having captured the sunlight, turning it into animals and plants, and then having them undergo whatever they do in order to become oil and coal. So, Tap it again, please. So what we want to do, really, to be alive is to keep our biological batteries charged, which essentially means keep us further from equilibrium. Because just like with your car, that battery doesn't do very much. But think of all the things you can do with a charged battery. So all the things we can do require that our battery be charged. And what aging essentially is, is the movement by which we go closer to equilibrium. In other words, as we discharge our battery. So there are things that we can do that enhance our ability to stay away from being discharged. And they're all regulated by the endocannabinoid system. So by increasing cannabinoid activity, we wind up creating fewer and having less harm done by the free radicals that we produce, those inflammatory reactions. We reset those thermostats. Continue, please. Well, this is what I, what I mentioned a little while ago. You know, again, flowing energy and how the endocannabinoid system regulates that flowing energy in a very unique way. The most obvious one, it starts the ball rolling because we get the munchies, we give them to ourselves, and we use cannabis to get the munchies, and, and then uh, move on from there. Next one, please. Uh, so you are what you eat, and that's very true, because we want to be able to have that biochemistry flow smoothly and in a way that minimizes the production of free radicals in an inappropriate fashion. There are times when they're good, we use them to fight infections, which is why we need to turn it down again. Remember, we need that inflammatory thermostat down regulated a little bit. But uh, among those, uh, among other things, facts that pertain to this, how many of you take omega-3 fatty acids? The doctors all tell you it's great for you, right? But do your doctors tell you that the reason it's good for you is because your body makes them into endocannabinoids? And I bet you most of your doctors don't know that. But basically what they're doing is they're getting you a little higher. Omega-3 fatty acids have effects on mood, on pain, etc. All the things cannabinoids and cannabis the plant does is what omega-3 does because they're turned into it. And you want to take the long chain omega-3s. You want to take the ones from fish oil and krill oil. The plant, or plant ones are shorter chain and they don't do quite the same thing. Next slide. So, eat what you want to be. If you want to be healthy, you got to eat healthy. You know, one of the only things that really prolongs life is caloric restriction. If you eat 30% less than what you're supposed to eat, then you wind up living 30, 50% longer. In all the animal studies, they have primate studies going on that are showing the same thing. So, uh, eat less and eat the right kind of stuff. Certain things promote the inflammatory reactions. For example, omega-6 fatty acids can promote the inflammatory responses. And we won't go into the details as to how that all happens, but that is reality, which is why you want a good load of the omega-3s and the right ones. But other things as well, you know, the, uh, the um, various forms of saturated fatty acids, like when you hydrogenate fats so that you don't have butter, instead so you go and take margarine, all of those things tend to be bad for you. 
Uh, eating fats, you know, how many of you have heard of the Atkins diet? Has anybody gone on that? You know, it can profoundly increase uh, your health, your state of health, and here you're eating nothing but fat. It's all a matter of how your body balances out burning sugar and burning fat. And with the right balance, and where you're in the maximum degree of harmony for whatever that means for you, and we're all individually different, even if you're twins, you're different, because of these flow patterns. It's not just your genetics, it's what's flowing through you and the impact of stress in particular. Because stress promotes free radicals on, within the cell and within you as a being and within society. It's all an echo of the same things. We're called fractal. We have the same process repeated on different levels. Different